Page 8, example 2.1. Let's let ZT be twice the value of a true die, shown on the tth toss. What does that mean? Well, the word die is the singular of the word dice. You've probably heard people say tossing dice. You don't hear people saying tossing a die as much, but that's what we're referring to when we're just talking about tossing one of them, tossing a die. And a true die is a die that hasn't been tampered with by some crooked gambler. It might also be called a fair die. The tieth toss just means is it's the first time you're tossing it, the second time you're tossing it, the third time you're tossing it. If it's the first time, ZT will be Z1, because T equals 1. That's time, the time index. If the die is tossed three times, independently, then for the stochastic process ZT, the T will belong to the index set 1, 2, 3, because the die was only tossed three times. Now remember that for each omega, for each possible omega, you have one realization that's possible. The, the z is called the sample function of the realization, and z is a function of t. And there's one of those realizations for every possible omega. Now, if we want to figure out how many possible omegas there are, omega is actually a combination of three different values. The, the value for the first toss, the value for the second toss, the value for the third toss. So omega belongs to sample space that for the first toss is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. For the second toss is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And for the third toss is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And if you're familiar with the probability concept of counting in a situation where you have something ordered, like this is ordered from first toss, second toss, third toss, and it's also called with replacement because when you uh, choose one of those six numbers in the first toss, you can still pick the same number on the second toss, still pick the same number on the third toss. That's called with replacement, ordered with replacement. The total number of possible realizations then is 6 times 6 times 6, because omega belongs to the sample space that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So there's a total of 216 different possible realizations because there's a total of 216 possible particular omegas. For example, what if your omega you get is 1, 3, 2? And what's the time series since we let zt be twice the value of the tossed die? So if you get 1, the value will be 2. If you get 3, the value will be 6. If you get 2, the value will be 4. So therefore, the realization, according to this omega, is 264. So the total, as I said, is 216 possible realizations. And if you toss your die repeatedly and independently, then your sample space will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, dot, 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 for an infinite number of tosses. And so... The total number of possible realizations in the ensemble will be infinite. Now, suppose in such a case, you have a particular omega reflecting the tosses being in order 1, then 4, then 2, then 3, so on and so on. Then what will your time series data be? Your time series data will be twice of that. So it will be 2, 8, 4, 6, and so on and so forth. Now, this particular realization that you've got, 2, 8, 4, 6, and so on, and so on, this is just one of the infinite number of possible realizations that would occur in an ensemble in which you had an infinite number of tosses, okay? But most of the time, when you're doing time series analysis, you don't look at an infinite number of possible realizations. In fact, you only look at one, one realization. So in real life, you just get one realization. Now, based on our preceding discussion, we can classify time series into the following categories. One category is the so-called continuous time series. In a continuous time series, your time index t can be any value on the real line. That's a continuous time series. And there are many examples of continuous time series. For example, you go to visit your friend in the hospital, and the doctor recommends that uh, your friend gets his blood pressure and heart rate measured. The blood pressure is a continuous time series because there would be a blood pressure value one second from now as well as 1.0000001 second from now. And infinitesimally small accurate decimal places, they would all have a blood pressure reading corresponding to them. That's a continuous time series. And at the hospital, they would check the heart rate and that's also another example of a continuous time series. Now, in contrast to continuous time series, there is what we call a discrete time series. And an example of this would be quarterly balance sheets 
of a company. Balance sheets are, in case you don't know, they're only produced at particular moments in time. So a quarterly balance sheet shows you what the assets and liabilities and equity of the company are on a particular day, the end of the quarter. So every three months in the year, there would be a quarterly balance sheet produced. So let's say end of March, end of June, end of September, end of December. The time index between those is one quarter, two quarter, three quarter, four quarter, and so on. There's no T equal to 1.000001 quarters. It's T is either equal to one, or it's equal to two, or it's equal to three, or it's equal to four. Uh, it could be negative if you're going backwards in time, looking at previous quarters. So when when your time index is an integer, whether positive or negative, the time index t is acting as a counter. And whenever you have t acting as a counter, you have a discrete time series. You wouldn't be able to look at the financial position of the company somewhere between t equals 1 and t equals 2, like at t equals 1.5, there wouldn't be an observation there. All you have to work with are discrete observations that are separated by set time intervals. The next distinction is that if at each time point you have just one observation, we call that univariate time series. And if at each time point you have more than one observation, we call that vector time series. Our example with the die being tossed is a univariate time series case because you're only observing one variable each time the, the die is being tossed. But uh, as you may recall from chapter one, we briefly looked at a graph of data from the Lydia Pinkham company in which we had observations of more than one variable at each time point. We had observations of the advertising number and the sales number at each time point. So that's an example of a vector time series.